Hello and welcome to another Every Tuesday tutorial. In this week's tutorial, we're creating a paper heart surrounded by daisies. So what you see on screen is exactly what we're going to be creating together. The color palette is free as always. Just tap on the link in the video description and you can download and install it. For this entire piece outside of the lettering, we'll be using one brush and that's my free mono white brush. And then for the lettering, we'll be using my bumpy ink brush from my Font Lovers Procreate brush set. And I'll also leave links to both of those in the video description as well. I'm going to start by creating a brand new canvas that's 1500 pixels by 1500 pixels at 300 dpi. I work in the display p3 color profile but if you're on an older iPad and you don't have access to that then the default sRGB color profile is perfectly fine. Okay I've got my brand new canvas and the first thing I'm going to do is drop in my background color so tap on your layers, tap on background color and select the very first color up at the top. The next thing we're going to do is apply our symmetry settings so we can create a symmetry symmetrical heart. To apply our symmetry settings, just come up to the wrench, go to drawing guide, edit drawing guide, and if you tap on symmetry down here, then the default settings are all you'll need. I'm going to make sure that this is super dark and increase my thickness so you can see it on screen. And now whatever we draw on one side will repeat on the other side. So I'm going to hit done. And over here in our first layer, you'll see that it says assisted now and assisted means that we have those symmetry settings turned on. I'm going to switch over to my lighter pink color, which is the second one up at the top. I have my mono weight brush selected and I'm going to draw that heart. Once you have your heart drawn, fill it with color and now we can turn off our symmetry settings. So come back to your layer, tap on the layer thumbnail, hit drawing assist to uncheck it and now we can get rid of our guide as well. So you can hit the wrench and then just toggle off drawing guide and now we're all set with our heart. The next thing we wanna do is apply a shadow behind the heart. So in order to do that, let's come to the heart layer. I'm going to label this heart. Tap on the layer thumbnail and choose select, create a brand new layer right above it. We're going to grab this darker, almost brown color, come back to your layers palette, tap on the layer thumbnail and choose fill layer. So now we've got that exact heart only filled with a different color and I can label this one shadow. And obviously we want our shadow to be beneath our heart. So I'm going to tap on my layer and drag it underneath my heart layer. And you could just apply a Gaussian blur to this to add that shadow, but I wanna add just a little bit more visual interest to it. So it'll be as if the heart is paper and it's kind of curling up just a little bit on both sides. So in order to create that effect, we're going to utilize the distort option in Procreate. So I'm going to select it by hitting my cursor icon. And down here, you're going to select distort. And all you're going to do is grab the center node and pull it out to the right. Grab the center node on the left and pull that out to the left. And I try and make these as even as I can. And then I'm just going to take this top center node and toggle it down just a little bit. All right, that looks good. And I wanna make sure that my point at the bottom is up just slightly. I don't want the shadow to go beneath the heart. So that's the look that I'm going for. I am noticing that it's a little thicker on the left side. So I'm going to thicken this up just a little bit on the right side. And now I can deselect and now we can apply that Gaussian blur. So I'm going to tap on my magic wand, choose Gaussian blur layer and just drag this up until it feels good to you. I'm going to come up to about 10%. Okay, and then we wanna change the blend mode of this to multiply because as we're drawing all the stems behind it, I want it to seem like a realistic shadow and by having a multiply blend mode, it will look more realistic. So I'm going to tap on the little N, drag this up to multiply. If that's looking too heavy to you, which it definitely does to me, remember you can just reduce the opacity to soften it up really easily. I'm going to come down to about 70%, but we can change this after we create all of our florals and foliage around the heart. If it feels too dark, we can lighten it up a little bit more. If we want it to be stronger, then we can always increase it. So this is just a starting point. So now that we have our heart, let's make sure it's all centered before we start drawing all of those floral and foliage elements around it. So I'm going to select both of these, grab my cursor icon down here. I'm going to switch to uniform and under snapping, just make sure the snapping is tied on and now I can move it until I see those crosshairs and now I know that my heart is centered and ready to go. Okay, so I'm going to start by drawing my floral and foliage elements around the heart but on top of it. That way I can kind of see how things are looking before we drag it underneath. So I'm going to come up to my heart layer, create a brand new layer right above it, label this one stems, and we're going to grab the medium green color right in the middle. The size of this is going to be 5%. And I'm going to draw some stems that come up around it kind of sporadically. Could have a couple that are close by here and there. 
And now we're going to attach some leaves onto them. So I'm going to reduce the size of my brush just a little bit. I'm going to come down to 3% and draw in these leaves. And they're going to be long pointy leaves. Once you have your stems and your leaves, now we're going to start creating the daisies. So I'm going to create a brand new layer right above the stems layer, label this one centers, and we're going to grab our orange color and increase the brush size up to 8%. And we're going to put little dots above each of these stems. Once you have your centers all drawn in, now we're going to draw in our petals. So create a brand new layer, label this one petals. And our petals need to go underneath our centers. So drag that right underneath the centers layer. We're going to switch over to the white. And I'm going to reduce my size back down to 4%. And for these ones, it's really up to you. If you want them forward facing, then you'll just draw all of your petals so they look like this. And then you can fill them in with color. If you want some side facing daisies to change it up, just draw your petals on one side and then fill them in. Once you have all your petals drawn in, now let's group all of these daisy layers together and label this one daisies. And I wanted to share a quick little trick with you for selections. Say that there are some flowers here like this little one and I want it moved up just a little bit. Instead of having to go through every single layer, selecting it and toggling that up, if it's in a group, you can select all the pieces at once. So with my daisies group selected, I can come up to my selection and choose freehand down here. And if I draw a selection around it and then grab my cursor, it'll move all the elements of that daisy up because it's part of a group. So that's a handy little trick for something like this. If you need to adjust anything, like if I don't like that there's a little bit of the heart peeking through right here, I just select it. Just make sure that you have your group selected before you do this and then you can move just that item and all the pieces even though all the pieces are on separate layers. It really helps to encourage multiple layer usage which is a really smart way of working in Procreate. So that's a, a nice little trick. Okay, so moving on, we're going to add in some flower buds next. So I'm going to create my flower buds underneath my daisies. So tap on the heart layer, create a brand new layer. This one we're going to label stems. And for this one, we're going to use our lightest green color. And we're going to reduce the size down to 3%. And these ones are just going to be kind of filler elements. So they're going to have a stem and then some stems coming off of them. Okay, once you have your stems, now let's create a brand new layer and label this one buds. And we're going to grab the same pink color that we used for the heart and increase the brush size up to 8%. And this one, feel free to change up the size of these to add a little bit of extra variety to it. And we're just putting these kind of ovals on top of those stems. Once we have those, let's group those ones together and label this one buds. Because these are our main elements surrounding our flowers, we want something in the background that's going to pull them forward. So I'm going to create a brand new layer underneath the buds group. So tap on the heart layer, create a brand new layer. This one we're just going to label leaves. And this is purely meant as supporting and to help bring our elements forward. So I'm going to grab my darkest green color, reduce my brush size back down to 3% and just put these big leaves, these big pointed leaves in the background. And because these are nice and dark and large elements, it's going to pull all those smaller elements that are brighter forward. So now let's bring all of these elements to the back of the heart. That way we can kind of see how everything is going to end up looking now. So select all those elements and then drag it underneath the shadow layer. And now we can see how everything is coming together. I think my shadow is still a little too dark here. So now that I know that, I'm going to come to my shadow layer and just reduce the opacity even more. I'm going to come down to 60%. And that feels a little bit better. I don't really like this green leaf that's right there. So I'm going to erase that. 
And then the last thing that I like to do is add in some floating daisies, and this will fill in all the gaps. It would be as if all of these daisies, the floating daisies, I always make them face forward, and it would be as if the stem were also facing forward, so you don't really see it because it's behind other foliage that's already in place. And that will also keep things from getting too busy because we do have a lot of foliage going on right now. So in order to do that, we're just going to do the exact same thing that we did with the daisies, only we're going to keep them all facing forward, and it's just going to be too layers, the centers and then the petals. So super simple. And you can change up the scale of them as you go around as well. So I'm going to create a brand new layer right above my daisies layer. And this one's going to be called centers. And I'm going to grab the orange again and increase my brush size back up to 8% and just put little dots where I feel like I could use some filler. Once you have those centers drawn, create a brand new layer, drag it underneath the centers layer, label this one petals, grab your white. I'm going to reduce my brush size down to 4% and draw those in. Once you have all of your floating daisies drawn in, let's group those layers together and label this one floating daisies. And then the only thing that we have left is to add in our lettering. So I'm going to create a brand new layer above my heart layer. So come up to the top, select the heart layer, create a brand new layer, label this one lettering. And we want this lettering to be locked inside of the shape of the heart. So we're going to apply a clipping mask to it. So tap on the layer thumbnail and choose clipping mask. I'm going to use the exact same color as the background color for the lettering. So tap on the very first color up at the top. I'm going to switch over to my Bumpy Ink Brush in my Font Lovers Procreate Brush Set. And you can just write whatever message you would like in here. Okay, and once you have your lettering, if it's in a clipping mask, you can still select it and move it around because I don't like the placement of this. So I'm going to select it with my cursor and then I can drag it however I would like. I can rotate it and tuck it in here exactly how I want it. So that's how to create a paper heart surrounded by daisies entirely in Procreate. Once again, links to everything mentioned in this tutorial are right in the video description, including the free color palette, the free mono weight brush, and the bumpy ink lettering brush. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please hit the like button, subscribe, and don't forget to hit the bell icon so you can be notified of new tutorials just like this one in the future. For more Procreate tutorials and freebies, head on over to my site, every-tuesday.com. You can also find me over on Instagram. My handle is every Tuesday. If you try this out and post it there. I would love it if you tag me. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you next week.